Tonight we're covering all the angles of this national story. We begin with Channel 4's Kumasi Aaron, who's joining us live from Charleston, a city in deep mourning. Kumasi. Well, definitely a lot of mourning here in this area. And one way that I find people are trying to cope with it is by coming together. Right now, I'm at Life Center Cathedral, and this is a place where you have a lot of pastors from the area, including one from Jacksonville here tonight. And again, this is just one of many places that I've seen people coming together, just trying to comfort each other throughout this terrible tragedy. One of the places being at Emmanuel AME, a lot of people were there this afternoon saying that they wanted to see the place where this tragedy happened. There's an unfamiliar stillness here in front of Emmanuel AME Church as people came together in front of its steps. Some left flowers, others their tears, where nine people lost their lives. Just um, very overwhelming, very um, shocking, and um, hard to process or comprehend. For Renata Early, it's a double loss. One of the victims, Susie Jackson, was her great aunt and another victor, Tawanza Sanders, her cousin. You just don't know how to deal with it. You don't know how to uh, process it. You, you don't even think it's true. You don't even think, like, you want to know what type of person, what type of demented person would come into a church, a house of God, sit down, interact, and be accepted into the actual activities going on at the Bible study for an hour or so, and then get up in take the lives of nine people. Now she says it's more than her family members who were gone, but also her sense of security. If you can't go and be safe in a church, where can you be safe? That's a safe haven when you need help, when you need uh, a quiet place to talk to God. That's where you go. And she actually told me that her family very has a very rich history at that church at Emmanuel AME. They've been going for quite a long time. They live right across the corner, so they would just walk to church. And so that's what makes this loss for her and her family extremely difficult. It's also what pastors at this service are talking about, the church being a safe place, how they want the community to know that it still is a safe place. We'll have more on the service that's going on right now coming up at 11. Reporting live in Charleston, Kamasi Aaron, Channel 4, the local station. Hundreds of people, including state and national leaders, are gathering in front of Charleston's Emanuel AME Church. John LaForce Kumasi Aaron is there. She's joining us now live from this still grief-stricken city. Kumasi? It definitely is, and you can really tell how much just by the amount of people who are here right in front of Emmanuel AME Church. I'm just going to get out of the way and show you just what it looks like here. So many people are gathered just in front of what has become a very large memorial. You can see how many uh, flowers people have come and left here, and you have people just standing in this quiet stillness. I don't know if you can see over here. These people have been really emotional. They've been kind of holding each other, crying together. One of the young men who was over there, I was over here about an hour ago, he came up to the church. He just kneeled down, and he just started crying. And people came over immediately. They were trying to comfort him. They were trying to uh, just be with him in this moment of grief. Someone told me he had a lot of friends and family members who attend this church. So just very hard for people who have been gathering here. Also, state and national leaders have been here, too, giving people some perspective of how they feel about this tragedy. On the street where citizens of Charleston and South Carolina came to remember the nine people shot and killed at Emmanuel AME Church, their governor came to do the same thing. Uh, Mother Emanuel Church family, the AME family, the state of South Carolina, everybody feels this pain. Standing in the middle of Calhoun Street, Governor Nikki Haley said today was different but no less emotional because she and others woke up knowing the suspected shooter was behind bars. Governor Haley says he doesn't represent Charleston and his case will serve as an example of how she and South Carolina view hate crimes. You want to see hate crime? Watch how we handle him. That'll show you how we deal with hate crimes in South Carolina because you will see that we will push for the death penalty. We will make sure that we do everything we're supposed to and we will show that that is not acceptable in South Carolina. Those purveyors of hate, we as Americans will not subscribe to that philosophy. We will not give up. We will not give in. We will not give over. Just a few blocks away, NAACP president and CEO Reverend Cornell Brooks told those gathered at the group's Charleston headquarters, justice means going deeper than investigating and prosecuting one person. 
Can we characterize what happened in the church perpetuated against African Americans and the values of this country? We have to ask ourselves the question, is the right terminology a lone shooter or is the right terminology a domestic terrorist? He says while the crime committed at this historic church may have happened in minutes, it developed over a long period of time. We as a nation have to address that. We as a nation have to confront those values. We as a nation have to be very clear. A little bit of racism, a little bit of bigotry, a little bit of bias is not acceptable. As you see people gathering here behind me, this isn't the only place where people are going to be getting together. In just under an hour, there's going to be a prayer vigil put on by the city of Charleston at the College of Charleston, which is just a few blocks from where we are now. And of course, I will bring you a live update from that. And also, I've been talking to a lot of people out here, everyone here for a different reason. I'll bring you some of their stories coming up tonight at 6. Reporting live in Charleston, Kumasi, you're on Channel 4, the local station. It's hard to express the sorrow. It's a memorial that keeps growing with flowers, teddy bears, handwritten notes, all honoring the nine people who lost their lives here at Emanuel AME Church. Michelle Myers came to honor one of them, her friend, librarian Cynthia Hurd. I used to just go over there and just bother her and, you know, just joke around and tell about my grandchildren, you know, things like that. Sister Margaret Carey didn't know any of the victims, but felt a connection to this church congregation. That's why she and the other sisters decided to come by. And today the community said we want to pray with the people of the church. And we didn't see anyone here this morning, but we prayed with them in spirit. Tara Hall Wegner came with her handwritten poem and laid it between the many bouquets of flowers here a small token of love and solidarity. I feel like we're a community in Charleston, and every community has problems. This boy wasn't even from our community, and he came here, and, and, and he hurt us. Now the prayer is for healing and a return sense of security. I hope for that everybody just be safe, you know. Um, the safest place you should have been to be able to be in is in the church. And when you can't be safe in the church, then that's where the problem come in. In Charleston, Kamasi Aaron, Channel 4, the local station.